Hello and welcome back to another episode of Craven Some Raven. Yes, I know it's been a while, but you guys know how it is. The holiday season is upon us. Christmas is over with. It is done. And you know, I've just been busy every single time I tried to record. Something came up, you know, like you know, friends are in town that I haven't seen in a while. It's like, uh, I gotta fucking hang out with them. Put the podcast aside. Life comes first, but we are still craving some raven. And frankly, you know, I'm just lazy sometimes and, you know, dealing with a hangover. I can't really record when I'm hungover. I don't really know about you guys, but I have trouble doing anything when I'm hungover. So without further ado, let's just fucking get into things. Uh, you know, I wanted to break down, I, I think I broke down the Browns game, but you know, I hadn't had a chance to talk about it, and so since I hadn't recorded in a while, this one I think is probably going to be a long episode, uh, so get get strapped in, get your popcorn ready, because there's some takes coming your way, and it's really tough, you know, I hadn't done this in a while, or haven't recorded it in a while, and it's super tough, this, this Ravens team, they, they don't make it easy on you to record. You know, you you get hyped for them, so it's easy in that sort of sense. But anything that you would debate, if there's questions, you know, are the Ravens going to be able to do this? Any question that you would debate, you know, with yourself, how is this team going to do this, blah, blah, blah. The Ravens have just made it way too easy, way too tough to try and come up with something to say. I mean, really, most of these podcasts could be, hey, uh, the Ravens are going to dominate. Lamar is going to look like a, a fucking football savant. And uh, they're going to dominate this week. All right, podcast over. Goodbye. See ya. I'll see you next week. It's really how short and sweet these podcasts could be because that's how dominant the Ravens have been. And as much as I love domination and I'm not hoping for for like a Ravens loss, I want to see them dominate. But it's like, yo, know, can we get some fun up in here? Can I get nervous a little bit? You know, at the start of that uh, Browns game, I was a little bit nervous. And in fact, you know, it, I, that game kind of pissed me off because they didn't do anything the first half. And so I bet the over in that game, and it was set at 48. And that is a big bet. That is a big bet to try and hit. So it, it you need to be clicking on all cylinders. And I thought the Ravens, they were going to be able to do that. But of course, you know, the first two quarters, they didn't score until like there was under two minutes left. Um, if I'm not mistaken, that it was under two minutes. And, you know, these, it's like, God damn it. You know, I, I'm not going to hit the under, right? When you watch a game and you bet the over and, you know, you're, you're, it's six to nothing, you know, two minutes before the second half, all right, I'm not going to hit it. I'll just take my losses and I'll be fine. You know, it is what it is. I, I got every other bet right, um, you know, not at that point. But, you know, hindsight, I did get every bet besides this Ravens bet. Um, so it, it's okay. It came out on top. It's like, damn it. I'm not going to do it. But the, God damn it, the Ravens played so good that they almost hit the over. They got 46 points. And the, the one thing I hate about betting an over is sometimes you're like, all right, I'm, I'm sitting there rooting. Like, Come on, Browns, just just get a long bomb. I, I Odell, you got it in you. You can do it. Get a miracle going. Come on. I know you got our number, Browns. 40 to 25. I know. Blah, 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 blah. You can, you can get at least one drive going. Last, last two minutes. Come on, guys. Just a long bomb. Start throwing it up. No, he's throwing Baker throws an interception. It's like fuck, you know. I thought I thought this this bet was over. I thought from the very start, you know, right before the half. Damn it, I'm not gonna hit this bet. Whatever, we'll live, we'll survive. But then they give me hope, and I think they're actually gonna hit it. Oh god, damn it. But I mean, that's just the way this this team has been playing, and it goes back to what I said. You know, it's been almost boring how dominant they have been. Uh, I imagine an outsider would say, oh, yeah, the, the Ravens aren't fun to watch anymore. But they really are, though. They really are. Um, you know, you like to see excitement. But this is the, this Ravens team, it's the rare occurrence where watching a blowout is still fun. Lamar Jackson, unanimous MVP winner. I'm glad we could fucking say that now. I've had podcasts where the title is Lamar will win the MVP. I've, like, from the very first episode, I'm pretty sure I said that. I don't know if it was the first episode, but very early on in this process, I, I, was, I was saying Lamar's going to be the MVP. And I'm going to keep harping on that because that is some some awesome shit to hang your hat on. Say, hey, I was right about it. 
I was right. And there's some other shit that I was right about, but nothing as great as that. I talked about them defeating the rushing record. We still got one more week to do it. And up against the Steelers team, we got to get 93 yards, and I think they can do that. Right? I think they can get the 93 yards. I think with RG3 in, with Trace McSorley in, I think they're going to run the damn ball. I think Gus Edwards is going to get over a buck. I think Justice Hill is going to get about 70-something. I even think some of the wide receivers are going to get involved in the run game. They're going to be catching sweeps. They're going to be trying a bunch of crazy stuff. We, we want to destroy the Steelers' hopes. It wasn't too long ago that on, was it Christmas Day? Was that a Christmas Day game? where Antonio Brown reaches across, and uh, I'm sorry to bring that up. I know if you're listening, you didn't want to hear that. But you know what? They, let's take their hearts out. Let's destroy this Steelers team, okay? Come on, Ravens. I don't want to see them in the playoffs because that would be some baby back bullshit, all right? I, I, don't, wa- I don't want them anywhere near uh, this playoff scenario. I, we, I want to take their hearts out. I want to show them their heart. You know, I just want, I just want a nice, solid Kalima. Just let's just rip the heart out of their chest, out of their fan base. Go fuck yourself, Pittsburgh. Your city sucks. I'm not saying Baltimore is much better, but it is. You know, there's not many cities that are better than Baltimore, or that are worse than Baltimore. That's a lie. Baltimore's awesome. I, I've, I've been there a bunch of times. I, I fucking love it. I don't want to shit on the the team that I'm promoting, so let's just get it. Let's just get away from that. Just ignore everything I just said. Um, but yeah, fuck you, Pittsburgh. But going back to that game a little bit more, uh, back to that Browns game. I mean, we're not going to talk about it. Was really stagnant, right? You know the the. Lamar was just not in rhythm with his wide receivers. There was uh, free runners, free blitzers coming in. And eventually, you know, Lamar, he was able to feel out the game and able to get on a roll. And, I mean, talk about a fucking roll. I mean, this is like, that was like the most delicious dinner roll I've ever seen. Soft, sweet, crispy somehow. Just a perfect dinner roll. A little bit of butter. Mmm. Delicious. Because how the fuck is this man going to throw... Two touchdowns in, like, actual time, maybe five minutes. Like, in actual real-life time, I'm pretty sure it was only five minutes, and the dude drove down the field two times. Two times, if you hear me, I'm lighting a candle because I'm feeling fancy, okay? I, I I want this podcast to smell good. Even though you can't smell it, you will know. Ah, it's gonna burn me. No. Nice. All right. I mean, listen. That that might have been the most impressive I've ever seen Lamar Jackson this this whole year, right? He's done a lot of impressive things. He beat Michael Vick's uh, single season rushing record. He he beat uh, Vinny Testaverde's uh, passing touchdown record. And there's still a game left, and he's not going to play. And and he also missed like a game and a half worth of fourth quarters. That's how dominant he's been. I mean, just efficient, really. And like out of all the, the craziness, all the awesome jukes that I've seen all year, those two drives, that, that, is, that is some champion goat shit, all right? I know it was only for the first half, but, you know, you can see. And this isn't the first time, you know. Remember the – so it seems like Lamar Jackson – has a two touchdown uh, comeback ability because this isn't the first time this year versus the Chiefs he led two drives for the touchdown. Now the defense wasn't quite able to do it, and you know they ended up losing the game. But you know at the very end he had his team in position and he he willed his way basically with two scoring drives, one rushing, one passing. I think one was I think one was passing. I can't I can't remember. Um, but he has those end of the game drives in him. And you know, this was just another example. It just happened to be at the half. You know, we got to get something going. Let's do it. Cuz he also did it in that um Chargers game. You know, at the very end it looked like trash, but then at the very end started turning up. So you see these things and it and it makes you happy for the future and it just it's just very impressive. You know, as a football fan, you don't just see that. Um I can't wait. 
eventually he will have like a game winning comeback drive and it'll be all sorts of fucking awesome and crazy. Uh, I think he might have had a he's had a game winning drive, but not like a comeback kind of drive, you know, not like, hey, you're down. We need to score now. I don't think we've seen that, you know, at the very end of a game. But, uh, yeah, dude, just super impressive. That, that This is not what us as Ravens fans were, we're used to, right? It kind of goes back, you know. It's been boringly dominant, but not at all. It's it's exciting as a Ravens fan, but this is just not what we've come to expect. This is just not what we know as a team. And I'm just glad glad to do it. You know, that, that game against the Browns, the Ravens, you know, once they, once they got that uh, – Got that lead going, you know, two two quick touchdowns. They get the ball the second half. They get it. They score, and it's like, okay, three touchdowns in a matter of, uh, like, I don't know how long that drive was coming out of the half. I'm pretty sure it was a long one, but, I mean, like, 10 minutes, three scores without the other team scoring. That That is some great shit right there. I mean, I mean, Lamar's the GOAT. Can we, I mean, I know he's the llama. I know it's way too early, but it's never too early to make predictions. You want to go GOAT status? Should I go GOAT status on Lamar Jackson already? <sighs> man, I, I would like to make my prediction until after this season, but fuck it, man. I mean, GOAT status. I mean, who the fuck, as a quarterback coming into the NFL, says they're going to get a Super Bowl out of me? Bleed that. What? That... Is some goat shit right there. If Babe Ruth didn't call his shot that he was getting a home run, he'd be like, yeah, he was a great fucking player. But since he called his shot, that is that legendary status shit that will live forever amongst all sports things. You know, if Lamar Jackson, which I think these Ravens can, I think they can win the Super Bowl this year. Like, there is no question that they have the ability. It feels like they can only beat themselves because they've dominated the playoff competition. They've already beaten all of these top guys. And they didn't really dominate the 49ers, but hey, the weather was there. I was at that game. That was fucking miserable. The rain, the cold, it it is what it is. But, I mean, we've, you know, more often than not dominated this playoff contending teams. And I know he hasn't done it yet. He's only played in one playoff game. And, all honestly, he, they shouldn't have even been there. They, they were a 4-5 and five team before he took took over. And now it, it feels like it's almost the same players. You know, you, you get some players, you lose some players. And then now everyone's saying, oh, well, this Ravens team is just really good. It, it's the team around him. No one was fucking saying that. No one thought that, right? You know, I think some of it, it's, well, let me, let me say this. Every single team has the best athletes in the world, right? You know, and I'm talking like power to weight ratio, speed, agility, uh, conditioning, just raw, you know, size to a, size to speed. The NFL has the best athletes in the world. Now, obviously, there's people in other sports that you could say the same thing, but everyone on that field is fast, and everyone on that field is huge. They would win at in almost every fight outside of the football field. Now, every single team has these. So it's, you know, how are some teams way more dominant than others? And I just think it goes back to the fact that in football, coaching is more important than any other sport. And it's not to demean the players in any fucking way. There are true talented players like a Lamar Jackson that, you know, coaching doesn't matter. There's, there's, there are these players that, you know, coaching just doesn't fucking matter. But as a team, as a whole, right, you know, coaching is super important. You know, that's, I think that's kind of why football is super popular. It's because it's just some random guy who doesn't have the athletic skills that can give his team the ability to win. Because it's all about scheme, you know. The plays are so bang, bang, quick that you got to be in the right place at the right time. Some players are just great. They're instinctual. They know where to be. But a lot of times it's coach, you know, we should be here. Here's the play call. This is what we're doing. You know, the perfect play call trumps talent. That's just the way it is. Um, you know, so it's how, how are the Ravens so dominant? It's their scheme. 
It really is. You know, it's not – it's Lamar Jackson doing what he does and their scheme. Now, I don't want to demean any of the players, but it's – you know, they – these people, all of a sudden now it's, oh, the Ravens just have the better roster, right? That That's what it is now? Like, I, I heard none of that before the season. It's the same fucking players. But since they're producing, you know, it's whatever. You just shouldn't get triggered by stupid shit like this. I'm not sure if I had a different point besides that, but, you know, you shouldn't really get triggered about stuff like this. Because even recently, I'm hearing some guy, this guy, Dave Gottlieb, with, like, the worst takes on Colin Coward, you know, still talking shit about Lamar, saying he would still take Sam Darnold over Lamar because it's the long game. Bro. Bro. And, you know, you shouldn't get triggered by this guy. He's obviously trying to give trash takes, trying to make a controversial opinion about uh, a, a great player, so that way he gets clicks, he gets noticed. I've never heard of this guy until this year when he was talking shit about Lamar. That's the only time. Ta- this is the first I've ever heard of this motherfucker. With a name like Gottlieb, I mean, you give me Lee, boy? Anyways. So... I'm going to try and not get triggered by this man because he's obviously a fucking idiot and deserves to be treated as such. Uh, put put him on the trash take hat. Give, give him the dunce hat. I don't know what we need to do. <clears throat> but Ravens fans, all 40 of you that might be listening right now, don't get triggered by this man. He doesn't deserve it. He, you're playing into what he needs, what he wants. He needs views because he knows his, his ideas are trash. So what does he have to do? He's got to go out there and just trash on the MVP of this league, of the future star. Everyone, including myself, when it comes to the take industry, the football take industry, is hitching their wagon to Lamar Jackson. You know, how do you make the most noise? Do you say, come on, let's go. Here's the wagon. Let's go. Let's go. You know, do you want to be on the sides cheering him on? Or do you want to lasso your rope and try to pull back? Right? Like saying the opposite of what everyone else is like genuinely thinking. That Lamar Jackson is going to be a great fucking player. Or, yeah, you take your, take your rope, attach it to that trailer, and, and just try to pull back on it to, to the point where everyone's like, hey, what the fuck's going on? Why are we slowing down? Who, who is this asshole? Who? I don't, know. I don't know if my analogy makes sense, but, you know, <clears throat> this guy's pulling back on the wagon. This train that can't be stopped. And he's just trying to make a bunch of noise. You know, you're trying to, they're trying to get to top speed in this train, right? And there's a gauge that's going crazy. And like, oh my God, what's going on? What's going on here? He's the, he's the squeaky wheel, right? <clears throat> squeaky wheels get the grease. Isn't that a phrase? Isn't that a thing? And this guy, he's just very noisy. Being obnoxious on purpose. This is what these guys, like Stephen A., Skip Bayless, these guys, this is what they normally do. Where they say something controversial just to get clicks, get a rise out of a fan base, and boom, they make more money. Now, all of them, uh, the, the rest of these take gods, um, you know, uh, I guess these reverse take people in the media, they've already realized, like, okay, um, there's, there's a certain point where you got to say, hey, it's better for my career, better for the brand to say the right thing, to, to agree with what you're thinking, that Lamar Jackson is going to be a great fucking player. I, I, all the signs point towards that. Everything he does on the field, I mean, come on, dude. It, being the most exciting quarterback, it, that, that, is, that is everything. You know, the hot quarterback. That in all of sports, quarterback, one of the, the craziest positions. And this guy is doing it in a way that no one has done before. I know people point to Michael Vick, but I mean, he's, Michael Vick didn't do what Lamar's doing. Yeah, they could both run, but Lamar is a fucking, he's, he's a savant. He's, I mean, he's Rain Man. Which makes it sound like he's retarded or, I guess, mentally uh, stupid. I don't know. What's the correct term to use here? Um... But no, he's, he's just a, a genius on the football field. The Beethoven of football. The Mozart of football. So I think these guys, you know, they see it too. And they're like, okay, I, I love doing the controversial pick because it gets clicks. But at the same time, this guy is so good. I'd rather be on the right side of history. 
I'd rather make the right call. You know, because at a certain point, trash takes, you're going to start losing everything. You know, you may get clicks in the short run, but in the long run, people are going to look back. Remember what that motherfucker kept saying about Lamar Jackson? He kept saying he'd have Sam Darnold. It's, and I'm giving him the time of day. I, I'm doing the opposite of what I'm, I'm saying to do. But you know what? Whatever. Whatever. The guy is digging his own grave. I, I have have fun with that, man. I, have fun. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to pause this real quick. I need some water, dude. Oh, man. Going back to that Browns game a little bit. Can can we get LJ Fort an interception? I mean, god damn, he had two of them. One of them was some dumbass penalty. I don't even remember seeing it on the TV. I didn't rewatch this game, but you know, I don't even remember seeing it. It might have been legit. It might not have been. Whatever. But they was like, that was a dope interception. I'm pretty sure it was the first one was the one-handed pick where it would have been turnover on downs either way, and it would have been smarter if he didn't intercept it. But no, there was a fucking penalty. I think it was like holding on Marcus Peters or something. Or Jimmy Smith, you know. I, I know Jimmy Smith loves to get those penalties. <laughs> so, especially against the Browns. I don't know what it is about Jimmy Smith and those Browns, but he always has a tough time, always has a tough game. And um, then then LJ Fort gets another one where he tries to do his best uh, Devin Bush impersonation. But you know what? I I guess one, I, I guess... I guess it's not an interception, even though the same thing happened versus the Steelers. I mean, what bullshit? I, that's that's the worst part. I I know, refing is the hardest job, and it's impossible to do. You can never be right a hundred percent, but you know they should strive for consistency. And it is just all over the fucking field, all or all over the place. I mean, how is it an interception with Devin Bush where the ball hits the ground, it moves, and they still call it an interception? How? Is is LJ Fort's not an interception? Honestly, I see it more not an interception. But if you're gonna call that one with Devin Bush versus the Steelers an interception, you know I, I, I I'm angry. LJ Fort deserves it. He got two in the game, both of them called back by some ticky tack bullshit. I'm not okay with that. We paid the man. He's producing. He's doing the right things. But the refs are getting in the fucking way. Go back to jail, refs. Get back on the chain gang. They look like prisoners, right? Some 19, 1920s prisoners with those fucking stripes. God, goddamn zebras. Um, yeah, man. There, there was some other stuff about this game I wanted to talk about. Uh, it's escaping me at the moment. Um, I mean, I at this point, I feel bad for the Browns Um, you know I thought they could be better this year and they kind of were I don't know if they have the same record or worse than last year Um, but they just they just can't fucking catch a break man you know this is why I think that was my point earlier actually when I was talking about the players um, and coaching and you know how it's more important because the, the Browns they do right they have talent on paper and it's all about putting it together. Coaching. Coaching fucking matters. And they just bring in a guy, Freddie Kitchens, and he's just not he's just not the answer, man. They keep getting guys who are new to the game. Not new to the game, but I mean new to the head coaching game, you know. And they think, oh, this is the new it it'll be the new era, it'll be the new start. But no, there's there's too much garbage in Cleveland. Too much history of garbageness, right? <clears throat> that they they need a guy. They need a guy who's been there and done that. They need Ron Rivera. I don't know if a lot of Browns fans, how they feel about it, but they need a guy with coaching experience. And Ron Rivera, a military man, a disciplined guy, a guy that can come in the room and like, I don't give a fuck about what you've done. Right now, this is how we're going to do things. You know, they have a young team. So they need an old guy with experience to kind of bring stuff together. Uh, you need... You know, I, I, I don't know. Like I imagine, like if you're sparring and it's two uh, newbies, they're gonna hurt each other. They're, they're not gonna. They're gonna injure themselves. They're gonna. They're gonna break their own foot. They're gonna punch themselves in the face. I don't know. Yeah, if you're gonna be inexperienced in the ring, you need at least someone with some experience who can kind of show you the ropes, right? I don't know if this analogy makes any sense, but 
You know, you got a, a rookie quarterback and like a rookie head coach that and a coach that hasn't really done it at that level yet. I mean, sometimes it works out. I mean, look at John Harbaugh and uh, Joe Flacco at the time. But I mean, it's it's rare when it happens. And that's and that was with the Ravens, right? An organization that had a proven history of doing the right thing. You know, nothing in the Browns history makes you trust any of their choices anytime they do anything. Like even with the OBJ thing, it's like, yo, he's a great wide receiver. Ah, but I bet shit's gonna go wrong and he's gonna you're gonna hear some lip and you know, to his credit, you haven't heard as much of that. You know, recently you started hearing it, but I think it's just people making up noise because they haven't been winning. But, you know, maybe there maybe there's a truth to it. You know, the noise comes from somewhere. But I mean, I just feel bad for the Browns because Oh, what was this that they haven't made the playoffs all decade, like in the past ten years? I mean, come on, man. Like it's just at some point, like yo, come on. And everyone was crowning him before before the season, right? You gotta walk before you can crawl. I mean, everyone's crowning him division champs, all this, all that, and you know, everyone's saying, "Oh, dude, they're they're the sprinters of the world. They're the they're the Usain Bolt. They're the new team." But they haven't even walked yet. You know, they're still babies. They haven't learned to walk, and they're just expected to run. Like before you go on a playoff run, you gotta learn how to walk, right? There we go. That I think that's a better way of putting it. I don't know about that, all that Usain Bolt Bolt talk shit, but Usain Bolt shit talk. I don't know. Whatever. <clears throat> I'm a little rusty. I haven't done this in a while, but. Before you make a playoff run, you need to learn to walk. And these Cleveland Browns have never learned to walk. It's just, it's that simple. I know that's just a stupid fucking analogy. That really means nothing. But it makes perfect sense. You know, they they just never been there. Never done that. And they're, they're just all of a sudden expected to. It's, come on, man. Get your shit together, bruh. Get your shit together. So... Poor Browns, also go fuck yourself, 40 to 25. Y'all deserve that. Y'all deserved a bigger ass whooping, and I thought it would have been, but, you know, those first two quarters didn't really do much. And, you know, this time of year, the Ravens have been so dominant. It's like, whatever, man. You know, this. It, we're not going to see Lamar for three weeks. You know, we're not going to see him against the uh, Steelers. We're not going to see him the first round of the playoffs. We won't see him till the divisional round, which, by the way, I might be going to the divisional round playoffs. I might be. I say might because I told my dad if he buys tickets, I will fly out there and go. And I've talked to him recently. He's like, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get some tickets. I'm like, okay. I haven't heard about it. You know, it's coming up. I got to buy plane tickets. It's coming up. So, Dad, if you're listening, what's going on, man? Let's get those tickets. Let's go. Let's go see some Ravens playoffs. All right? Now, I kind of want to go see, uh, get tickets for the AFC Championship. But you don't know for sure if they're even going to be there. I don't know what the deal is with the refunding. Uh, I know it might be a bitch with the airline. Uh, so I, I I imagine you can refund and everything will be fine. And, it, you know, you got to risk it a little bit if you want the biscuit. If you want to see the AFC Championship in Baltimore, dude. It's not here yet. I don't want to get too excited. But the possibility, you know, that's what it, it's the possibility, dude. Oh, my God. And it hasn't happened. It's never happened. We've never been this good. Uh, I've heard some people like, yo, which team is better, 2,000 Ravens? Or like, what's the best team in Ravens history? Uh, it's this one by far. I don't think it's without a question. Recency bias, 100%. But at the same time, we, and what team has broken this many records? Uh, you can point to the 2,000 uh, team, how dominant they were. But I mean, you know, one of my opinions, probably not as popular amongst Ravens fans, that 2000 defense, I don't think it's the greatest of all time. One of the greatest. I thought, I thought they played really well. You know, they st- statistically have led in a bunch of fucking categories. But, you know, it's stuff like this year, the Patriots at the beginning of the year, being compared to them. And I, and I told my friend, who, who was a Patriots fan, like, listen, you can be compared to that Ravens defense all you want. They, they were they were great. They were amazing. But the only reason they have this legendary status is because they they dragged uh, a team to the playoffs. They did that. They, it was them that won the Super Bowl. 
It wasn't anybody else on the Ravens. I know they scored some offensive touchdowns, but it was the defense that won them that championship. That's why <clears throat> they reached you know, legendary status amongst all-time defenses. It's because they won the Super Bowl. Not, not anybody else on the team. Like I said, yes, they scored some offensive touchdowns, but it was that defense. And where does the, where's that phrase come from? Defense wins championships? 2,000 Ravens, baby. That's where it comes from. Obviously, that phrase has been around longer, but you know, that the 2000 team I, feels like I'm like, like I'm hating on the Ravens, but I, I'm not. I'm literally not. I just I think there's some aspects that are a little overrated. I think the only reason they're viewed as a legendary status, maybe maybe you can show me some stats on go. Yeah, that that is pretty legendary. That is pretty dope. That is amongst the best. But I'm sure you could also probably pull up stats that say, no, they were, they were an average defense. That's why I hate stats. But the, the reason they're known as one of the best defenses is because they won the Super Bowl. And really, that might be all that does matter. So maybe it all makes sense in what I'm saying is, is a load of horse shit. But I, I was just thinking about it because, you know, at the, at the beginning of the year, it was like points per gamers. It was some weird stat. And it was like, oh, the Patriots compared to this are better than this 2000 defense. Are they the best? Are they the best? It's like, no, well, the, the reason they're considered the best is because they won the Super Bowl. That defense won a Super Bowl. So, I don't know why I'm talking about this, but it's probably because the playoffs are coming up. Oh, my God, we got one more game, week 17. How is it already here? And we got to play the Steelers. Oh, when they came up with the schedule, they thought they were smart. Ravens versus Steelers. This is going to be for the division. Both teams could knock each other out. Nah. Nah. Steelers, maybe they back into the playoffs if they win. Um, maybe that, that still has to, you know, they have to account for other shit. Other shit has to happen. Which even the, even the goddamn um, uh, Raiders, they can get into the playoffs. And it's actually crazy because what the Raiders have to do it's not too difficult. They got to win. Uh, the Texans have to lose, or no, the uh, the Titans have to lose, and the Steelers have to lose. All of which, very possible. And I think something else, like the Colts have to lose, or the Colts have to win. I forget. Yeah, it's something. It's something that is really not that crazy. That like as a betting man, if I were to pick the games, I'd be like, yeah, I, I would totally pick the games that way. So that's crazy, man. Um, uh, before we get to playoffs though, uh, maybe I'll save that for another podcast. I did talk about it uh, last week a little bit, you know, breaking down the playoffs and it's already here. Uh, the Ravens do have one final last game versus Steelers. Like I mentioned just a second ago, and this is it boys. I mean, Lamar ain't playing. We're resting starters. You couldn't ask for a perfect ending to a season. You know, how often are we sweating? At this point, how often is it? I don't even know. I don't know what to say. It's too much. I can't handle it. My heart is pounding too much. You know, it's it's just too nerve wracking this time of year as a Ravens fan. Because we're good enough to get so close, but so far. And and oh man, Antonio Brown Christmas or the fourth and fuck you Cincinnati. Tyler Boyd, I hate you. I really do. <laughs> but I mean, it's how many times have we been so close? It's so far and just not made it. Like, oh, if we get into the dance, maybe we can make some noise. No, this this is the year where it's like <clears throat> we've already made enough noise. They know we're here. We're here. We're not a deer, so get used to it. I don't know. We're here, we're drinking beer, so get used to it. You know, the Ravens have made a bunch of noise already where it's, you know, it's not the, it's not the, man, if they get into the playoffs, they can make some noise, you know. They, they could be, no one wants to face these guys. Nah, no one wants to face us. No one wants to face us. And that won't be a narrative this playoffs because everybody already knows this. It's something that's so obvious. You know, when they have these takes, say, hey, no one wants to see this team no one wants to see blank team they got to pick a team that no one expects to win right they already know the ravens are killing it they've destroyed like i said earlier they've already destroyed you know it they've destroyed competition in the playoffs they've destroyed playoff caliber teams destroyed them destroyed them. 
So, I mean, really at this point, the only thing that can stop them is themselves. And I talked about that last episode, but it was a while ago. So maybe I'll touch on a little bit more. But let's just break down the Steelers game. Uh, You know, it's coming up quick. Uh, We're resting our starters. The Steelers still have a chance to get in if they win. And I think something else happens. I think if the Titans lose and then boom, they're in. I do not want to see that happen. Um, John Harbaugh and... Mike Tomlin, they have a rivalry. You know, they've been coaches here for a while. Two of the most tenured uh, coaches in the league. Uh, I guess top five. I don't know where they actually rank, but they've been at their respective teams. Both, both uh, organizations really. They they stick with a coach when they when they know they have a guy. They stick with them. You know, that's that's why they've been successful for so long. You know, the Steelers. I don't even know how they're in this position when they had Ben Roethlisberger go down. They get rid of A. B. They Get rid of Le'Veon Bell. It's like, what the fuck? Yeah, but, you know, you know the Steelers, man. They draft a wide receiver, and he's amazing. Uh, Deontay Johnson, I think that's his name. You know, he's playing pretty well recently, so we got to watch out for him, right? But if there's anything, I believe in our defense. He's the only thing on that offense, right? Deontay Johnson is the only thing on that offense that scares me. They are terrible. Uh, they have been anemic, uh, to use a word, right? They've been sickening how bad they are. They're impossible to watch. And that's, you know, it, and it's tough for me to watch any other team play offense because, you know, they don't have Lamar Jackson. They don't have an exciting team. And we, we just have the most exciting offense. So anytime you watch another team play offense, you're like, oh my God, this is, this is what we used to watch? Ah. Oh. No wonder people never picked us for anything. No wonder no one gave the Ravens credit. Look at how boring and disgusting this is. Ugh. Get that duck man out of my face. Wait, wait, what is this drop back and pass? He's not even going to run it? That's a load of shit. Run it, damn it. <laughs> I mean, yeah. It... So the Steelers, their offense is just, just boring. It's not good. They got no run game. And if we get up early, you know, that it, it'll be end of the story. Now, RG3 is going to be starting, so we'll see. We will see. You know, a lot of our guys, everybody that's been, um, I imagine, uh, benched, I guess, you know, and not active for the games, They, I imagine all of them will be active. So I'm excited to see some Jaleel Scott. I'm excited to see some Trace McSorley. You know, what we saw in the preseason, that was some good shit. So I'm excited to see them play. RG3, you know, any time he's come in this year, he's looked goofy. He's looked awkward. So maybe, you know, he gets the game script. You know, he gets the plan ahead of time. Maybe it'll uh, be a little bit better. Maybe he'll have a little bit more success. Greg Roman will have some stuff already ready for him. Let him get in a rhythm. Let him get going. And, you know, hopefully he only plays a half. And then we can put in Trace. And we can see what we have as a future backup in Trace. Because I imagine, I know, not I imagine, I know that RG3, he wants to be a starter. Uh, and you can't do that on the Ravens, you know, with Lamar Jackson. It's only going to take him going down. But I, I think he wants to be the guy, right? And so he needs the ball out in this game. And then we can ship him off for some picks, right? And there's nothing wrong with that. RG3 would want that, right? It helps us. It helps him. And then, you know, this game, hopefully we get a chance to see how... Tr- Trace McSorley has progressed during this whole season. It's almost like another off season. You know, a lot of times these rookies they come in, they do the combine, they do all the all reporting and practicing, and they don't have a break until the end of the season. So it's like two years almost full of football because once they finish the college, uh, their college careers, I guess their college season, it's nothing but, <clears throat> hey, you gotta train here you got to work out here you got to you got to go across the nation visit with some guys you got to do this interviews blah 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 then off season starts right away for the nfl and then you're in and playing and you don't get a break and then you hit that so-called rookie wall but tracy hasn't been playing he hasn't been active so hopefully he's been practicing he's been hit the weight room he's been learning the playbook he's been just dropping dimes at practice you know hopefully that's that's what's going on and he comes out and he balls out like he did in the preseason obviously that was against preseason competition but like i said those guys killer athletes they're still professional athletes to you know not the best but you know still good so i'm hoping it can carry over to the starting i really want to see jaleel scott ball out i know i've talked about it before he is my dude he is one of my honestly he might 
like just subtly my favorite wide receiver on the team you know size uh jump ball ability and you know he went to new mexico state this is a very close to my heart he's a hometown kid even though i grew up there but i live in new mexico right now so you know he comes from this region and you know you want to see him do good things he went He's on the Ravens, and I, I liked what I saw in preseason. I liked what I've seen, uh, like all off season. They kept hyping him up, and then he just hasn't been active. Now I was saying for the longest time, I'm like, when is Jaleel Scott going to get activated? I want to see a jump ball threat at wide receiver. I think we got that at the tight end position, but we don't have it at wide receiver really. You know, you can point to Miles Boykin, but he's he's a rookie. He's young. Um, and, and I trust Jaleel Scott more, even though he's done less. I mean, <clears throat> it just is what it is. I just want to I, – I, I think Jaleel Scott is a major weapon. And for whatever reason, we don't bring him in the toolbox when we need a weapon. He played decent special teams in preseason. Like he got a bunch of tackles there. So I don't really know what the issue is. You know, my guess is that he's been in some sort of doghouse situation. You know, we will know for sure if it's a doghouse situation because if everybody is active – if the only it's going to be the inactives are going to be the the guys who are sitting and Jaleel Scott. It's going to be like everyone else is active but Jaleel Scott. And it's like, "Damn motherfucker, what did you do? What did you do in practice that John Harbaugh said, "Go no, go fuck yourself." Is there something behind the scenes that we don't know about? Do they hate each other? What's going on? Jaleel Scott get in the game and ball out. Come on. Come on, man. Um But yeah, the the last time we played the Steelers, it was not pretty. Very different defense, though. We had a very different defense. Um, and it's similar to, yo, how did the Browns beat you? How did how did you play the Steelers so closely? Turnovers, dumbass. Why is there confusion about how the Ravens lost to the Browns or how they played the Steelers so tight? It's, oh, they played them tight earlier. S- fucking, like, three turnovers? Yeah, no shit. Turnovers are the most indicative stat for wins and losses. You win the turnover battle, you win the game. That's usually as simple as it can be, obviously. It's not that simple, but if you're going to point to one stat that determines how the game pans out, it's turnovers. And uh, in that game versus the Steelers, it was nothing but bullshit penalties all fucking game. That was the most irritating game of the entire fucking season. And I know they got dominated by the Browns. But that game was fucking irritating because it felt like the Ravens were dominating and destroying them. But every single time something great would happen on defense, something great would happen on offense, the refs were there to just jizz all over us and say, go fuck yourself. Bukakied all over our fandom. Fuck you, referees, for that Steelers game. It never should have gone to overtime. That should have been a dominating win. But thank you, referees, for really ruining my football experience. Thank you. So I don't see that happening again. Not at home. You know, I think the NFL would be smart to just help the Ravens out. The refs should be on our side from here until the Super Bowl. I genuinely think that. Because in my my heart of hearts, I believe in conspiracies. I believe in someone weaving the web. And I believe that the NFL does stuff like this. You know, they hire the refs in a certain way. You know, they know which refs do whatever. And I think they do somewhat try, maybe not rig it, but, you know, help out a little bit. I'm a believer in that kind of conspiracy. Call me crazy. But... The NFL's best interest is to have Lamar be the next thing. And the way to guarantee that is to get him to a motherfucking Super Bowl. So, Goodell, get your good refs out there. Get your refs that don't call anything or just help us out. You know, it's, oh, we got to, I want to face the best competition. You know, to be the best, you got to beat the best. Go, fuck that. I want the Super Bowl, you know, as much as I don't want any questions about whatever, yeah, all that matters is that trophy, all right, so Goodell, get some good refs in there, all right, you, you, you hear me, you know, I feel like if you say his name three times fast, Goodell, 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 he, he's, he has to listen to it, right, you know, something will go off in his office, that someone's talking about me, I don't know, like, I feel like they have the money, they have the power, they have the technology, that if they hear me say, Goodell, 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 
he will have to listen to this. So, Roger Goodell, if you're listening, you know it, we know it, the world knows it. Lamar is going to be the next thing, and you should just help it along. Just, just, give it a little, just, just tap it in, right? Just, just tap it in, you know. Just help us out, you know. This. This team has all the makings to be dominant. I mean, what they've done, it, it's more shocking if they don't win it, right? I know it's always, I think, the the Chiefs, that's always going to be the tough matchup. But, I mean, looking at the way they've played throughout the year, you know, especially in recent weeks, which is what you really should, you know, take a, a higher, you know, stock in, I guess, of what's happened recently, is that this Ravens team is fucking good, man. I think... They're the unanimous favorites for the Super Bowl. I I, I genuinely think they are. Um, now everyone can't pick the same team, so it's you got to have takes. To say I could see this team also doing it, you know. But I think it's you know, it's the conversations: Ravens, Chiefs, Forty Nine ers, uh, Saints. I think that's the prevailing consensus of the four teams, and. We've only beaten one of those teams, I guess. You know, we lost to to the Chiefs, but whole different team, whole different team. Similar, to what's going on with this Steelers game? But, you know, it's we've we've transformed our team, and I don't think anybody wants to play us. And you're talking with a well-rested Lamar, which is which is a whole other thing. You know, do you believe in the resting of a player? Will he come out cold? Blah blah blah. I don't know. What did Lamar do in Miami? You know, how many games did he rest before he went into Miami? You know, he played like maybe one quarter, two quarters, if that. He played two quarters before he got to Miami over like a four-week span. Went out and put up 59 points. I I think he'll be all right. Maybe. You don't know. You don't know for sure. But, I mean, his style, yeah. Get him, get him healthy, and I think, I think he's gonna be better. Cause think about how many times you see Lamar run and he goes out of bounds or doesn't quite make the cut because everyone's telling him go down, go down. But this is playoff football. We are gonna see the best Lamar that we've ever seen. I think we're gonna see the college Lamar. Now I know we've, we're already seeing it, right? The way he's been playing. Oh, he's doing what he did in college, right? No, he's not, because he goes down quicker. He. He tries to get down. You can see it. He's not willing to take the big hit. In college, he was going for broke every fucking play. And in this, and in the NFL, I don't think he has been. I think he's been holding back a little bit. I genuinely think that. Because he knows that everyone's watching, and he doesn't want to get his clock cleaned. And I think in the playoffs, this is do or die. He is going to risk it to get that motherfucking biscuit. All right? I think he is going, is going to be willing to run through the wall. Should he? Should he save himself for the Super Bowl? No. I think you ball out and do everything you can. I think we see more than one hurdle in the playoffs. I think more than one hurdle. I think he hurdles like upwards of three guys. Because he hasn't hurdled anybody all year. And his... His most one of his most famous runs was against Syracuse. Syracuse when he when he hurdled that dude and went into the end zone. That his Heisman moment. So, you know, I just think his his goat status is just gonna skyrocket through the roof if he if he does what he is capable of doing, which is oh that's a classic cliche of oh if they do what they're supposed to do they can win this game. <laughs> Whatever. I, I generally think you know if he does what he's capable of doing. He is going to enter GOAT status just after this first year. If you make a Super Bowl and win it, you know, two years ago, coming into the league saying, you can get a Super Bowl out of me, lead that. Looking straight in the camera, looking into the hearts and souls of every fan watching and saying, I'm here, motherfuckers. I'm here and I'm going to win some motherfucking games. Call your shot. The great Bambino. Dude, the, the Lamar Bino. I don't know. The great... Mom Bino, I don't know what we can call him, but there's a play on words there that I'm just missing. Um, yeah, man. Whew. I, I'm, I'm, I just got real excited, man. And we got one more game, and it's, it's fucking meaningless too. That's how good they've been. That's how good they've been. This game is meaningless. How many times have, has this game been too stressful? Where everything's riding on this moment. This game is usually a playoff game for us. But we haven't played a playoff game in like five weeks. 
Oh, we need this. Oh, we're going to need this win. Now, the, the last wins that we've been getting, it's a, yeah, it, it'd be nice. It'd be nice if we got that. We don't need it, though. It, it'd be nice, though. Hey, man, it'd be nice if we won. But we don't need it, right? So other teams, they need it. Like, this Steelers team needs this win to, to even have a chance. And, and even then, they're not in, right? But we need to just stab them in the motherfucking heart. Say, so you're done, Steelers. Get out of here. You're no more for you, 2019. Although, we will be entering 2020. Oh, get your glasses on. I got 2020 vision now. You can be a pilot. It's 2020. I don't know. Hindsight, 2020. We'll figure out how wrong I am with any of these takes, how right I am with any of these takes. We will find out because hindsight is always 2020, and we will be... In, in the Super Bowl vision 2020, I don't know. I'm trying to think of a good way to say it, but God damn it, I'm so excited. Um, yeah, bro. It's usually too stressful this time of year, so let's just go in. Nice, easy Sunday. You know, chill out. Don't even need to drink beer. Just drink a water, maybe some juice. Sit back, grab some, like a real mellow meal. Like, I don't know. Like some pasta. I don't know. What's a mellow meal? I don't really know what that means. It's not loud. It's not spicy. Just some rice. Just some plain Jane rice. Maybe a little soy sauce. You know, just be easy. Cool into it. Just be nice and chill. Watch this game. Watch the Ravens come out with a victory. Oh. Well, we finished the season on a 12-game winning streak. That's cool. You know, last team, which is, this is the craziest stat I, I, I heard that, the Orioles are the last Baltimore team to lose, you know, professional-wise. You know, the, the two professional sports teams, right? Orioles and Ravens, uh, duh. You know, the Orioles are the last ones to lose. That's fucking crazy, dog. It's fucking crazy. So let's just continue this winning streak. Oh, eventually, eventually it's going to come to an halt. But if this season has proven anything to me, it's that th- this is a different team. This is a new era. And they, they are destined to do great things. You know, this is not the same old team that we're used to. Yeah. How many years are we used to the same type of team? And this is completely different. They have, they have changed the mold. They have broken the mold, I guess. You know, they've gone through the glass ceiling. And so when I'm thinking, oh, eventually this has to end, right? A 12 or 11-game win streak, how long can they keep this up? But that's coming from a mindset of, oh, this same old Ravens. No. You know, I think maybe Eric Weddle is Nostradamus, but he was a little bit too early with his prediction. He was talking about this year. This ain't the same old Ravens, all right? So let's just get in there. Nice, easy win against the Steelers. You know, don't discount them, but hey, let's fucking ruin their dreams. Let's get that by. Let's chill out, watch some football, see who our opponent's going to be, and then just straight rape them non-consensual destroy them anal bleeding <laughs> i don't know like let's just get excited guys uh that's that's gonna do it man i know i just kind of was all over the place on that one but you know i haven't done this in like a week that's how it goes so you know let's let's hope for a big win this sunday steelers are going down playoffs is here you know, we're already in the dance. We already locked up the one seed. So it's like, man, fuck this game. But also, let's go, baby. Game without Lamar is not a game I want to watch. I'm just saying. So with that being said, guys, I think I'm just going to leave you with a go Ravens. Hell yes, dude. Playoffs, 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 playoffs. <laughs>